Hello, and welcome to the Church of Christ radio program. We would like to thank the Churches of Christ in this area for making these programs possible, and also you, the listener, for tuning in to hear the lessons as they're presented. The speaker at this time is Brother Brian Barrett, who preaches for the church in Spurlockville, West Virginia. If you enjoy Brother Brian's lesson, you may now visit our website at www.thechurchesofchrist.life. Brother Barrett has stored radio programs that you may listen to. And we now have a new video lesson taught by him every Thursday evening. You will also find links to other church websites with learning opportunities. Now, here's Brian. God, who at many times and in many ways spake in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the words. Hebrews 1, verse 1 and 2. For those who read and study the Bible, one truth holds steady. God has spoken. And in these last days, He speaks to us by His Son, Jesus the Christ, and the New Testament. The churches of Christ have sought to use this thought as our guiding principle, encouraging people to return to the Scriptures and use them alone as our guide in matters of religion and faith. We're living in a time where many have been taught and believe that division among Christian churches is a good thing. It gives us choices. But where do these choices come from? Why do they exist? What has been the results? Speaking to the last question, such division in doctrine, creed, and beliefs has led those who believe in Christ to not just be divided in thoughts, beliefs, or worship. But sadly today we see the influence of Christianity fading as there exists at this time no clear standard to follow. No clear understanding of right or wrong, if you will. This is by no means the first time God's people have been in such difficult waters. The truth that led them back before will lead us back to unity and success again. I've lived long enough to understand that given enough time, everything old is new again. Before we get into our lesson today, let's have a word of prayer. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we're truly thankful for your watch care over us and the gift of your Son, Jesus, who gave His life for our sins. And we're thankful for the Holy Spirit that has delivered your Word to us. And we pray, Father, that you would grant unto us this day an understanding of that Word that we might come to know your will for our lives and learn the way which you'd have us to live so that when this life is over, we might find an everlasting abode awaiting us in that eternal home of the soul. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, and amen. In our lesson today, we want to take a look at the term which is used in our opening text from Hebrews, where it refers to the last days. What are the last days? In Acts the second chapter, beginning in verse 14, Peter acknowledges that the coming of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost marked the last days. Beginning in verse 14 of Acts 2, Peter, standing up with the leaven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. 
and on my servants and on my handmaids will I pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. In those days, the last days, the coming of the Holy Spirit was a marker to show that we have indeed entered into what was prophetically known or understood as the last days. This prophecy comes from uh, the prophet Joel, even as Peter says, in what we now know as chapter 2, verses 28 through 29. But what exactly are the last days? If these indeed are, as Peter says, and Joel prophesied, what does it mean to be in the last days? Well, first of all, and especially for those who were there on the day of Pentecost, it means the last days of the Old Testament as a guide of faith and worship. It means the ending of one thing so as to begin another. The Hebrew writer in chapter 8 speaks to and concerning the transition from the days as they were under the Old Testament to the last days of that system of faith and worship as it was replaced by a new system. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 8. Beginning in verse 1, it says, Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the Son. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. Here the Hebrew writer is speaking of Jesus being in heaven, in the true sanctuary where God dwells. Going on to speak about Jesus in verse 4, he says, For if he, that is Christ, were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve under the example and shadow of heavenly things as Moses was admonished of God. Verse 6, But now hath he, that is Christ, obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established on better promises. For if the first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my commandment, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Now dropping down to verse 13, it says, In that he saith a new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. So when we speak of the last days, it becomes apparent that it was not God's intention that the old law would continue, but there was an end to that law so that he might establish a new. And once he has established a new, that which is old is ready, ready to vanish away. Now, to one who studies the book of Acts and the New Testament, we understand that the temple and Old Testament worship among the Jews did not stop automatically at Acts 2. While the church was established and Christians began to flow into it, and it marks the last days, there was still a period of this waxing old, if you will, where the system 
that those who refused to accept the new continued to worship in the temple and under the old law until such time as the Romans came and destroyed the temple and left them basically without the ability or place to truly follow in worshiping God under the old law. And so the last days marks the end of the period of the Old Testament. But as we look further, we see that with the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus, and on Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit, it sets a new beginning for the Jewish people, but not just a new, but the last age or period of God's grace before all things return to God and eternity what we generally refer to as the end of the world. There is not something to replace Christianity in another period of time in this world's history. Christianity is the last day, the last period, the last dispensation of time before Jesus comes again. 1 Corinthians 15.22 beginning there says, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he have put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet, but when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest, or rather made known, that he, that is God the Father, is accepted, which put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him that God may be all in all. And so the coming of the Holy Spirit signals the fact that, as Peter said, God hath made that same Jesus whom they crucified, both Lord and Christ. He reigns now over his kingdom, the church. He overcome one enemy, which was sin, at his death, burial, and resurrection. The last enemy to be overcame is the enemy of death, and that does not require a certain amount of time per se. It just requires the returning of Jesus Christ when the dead shall rise from the grave. The just shall return with Jesus to the Father. The kingdom shall be delivered up, and then we will find uh, the end of all things. Not only is this the end time in the sense that it is the last age, but as much as it was the last days of the Jewish people and their law as they came into service to God, Acts chapter 10 marks the fact that this also becomes the end time or last days of the patriarchs or the Gentile people who were not given the law. As we read and study in Acts 10, we know that Peter went into the household of Cornelius, who was a Gentile, and to his family and friends and those he had assembled together, and he preached unto them Jesus. At the end of his preaching, the Holy Spirit came upon them, even as he did those on the day of Pentecost, signifying to Peter and those who were with him that it was also the last days that the Gentiles should be separated out and apart from the Jewish people. And so chapter 10 marks this. And as we go over into the 11th chapter, it becomes apparent also to those that were at Judea or in Jerusalem. Acts 11 and 1 says, And the apostles and brethren, that were in Judea, heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. 
And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him, saying, Thou wentest in to men uncircumcised, and did eat with them. But Peter rehearsed all the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto them. Once the apostles and other people at Jerusalem heard that Peter had been preaching to the Gentiles, which up until that time had not happened, when he returned, they wanted to contend with him and argue with him as to why he did such a thing. And he went point by point from the beginning and expounded all the things that had happened in regard to opening up the door of opportunity to the Gentiles. And when he had finished this, we find in verse 17, this statement made by those who were there in Judea, the apostles and brethren. For so much then, as God gave them the like gift, as he did unto us, that is the Holy Spirit, who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was uh, I that I could withstand God? That's what Peter addressed them. And so when they heard this, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then, had God, then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. It is apparent up to this time that the Christian church had not considered nor believed that the Gentiles as of yet had part or lot in the matter of salvation. But with the coming of the Holy Spirit upon the Gentiles, Peter's preaching, them being baptized into Christ, they too entered into the last days. Isaiah 2 verses 2 through 4 prophesies of the last days when the Jewish people and the Gentile people or the nations would all come together in worship and service to God. Isaiah 2 and 2 says, beginning there, and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways. And we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hood. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. The kingdom of our Lord is not a military power to do war and battle physically. It is a battle, it is a kingdom distributed throughout the nations. And so with the coming of the gospel there in Pentecost, it marks the period of time that the Jew and the Gentile were moving toward entering into these last days. And so yes, the last days do refer to the fact that as we said, there is coming an end to this age. And with this age and these last days, also the end of the earth. Jesus had said in Matthew 24, uh, beginning there uh, in verse 35, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But the day of the Lord, or that day, and hour knoweth no man, and know not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came, and took them all away, so shall also the coming 
of the Son of Man be? Yes, heaven and earth will pass away. And that will signify the end of the last days. But of that day and of that hour, no one knows other than the Father himself. Paul speaks at the end of 1 Thessalonians 4 of the coming of Jesus and his taking the righteous into heaven. But as he comes into chapter 5, verse 1, he says, But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail or labor upon a woman or child, and they shall not escape. But ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Yes, we are in the last days. How long those days will exist, we have not been given information. We know that it will happen until uh, we will be in these days until God chooses to bring an end to the things of this world. Many have questioned the time that Jesus has taken to come back again. Why 2,000 years? Why so long? Well, one answer we can find is in Second Peter, beginning there in the third chapter, verse 9, where Peter says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. But he says we uh, look for a new heaven and a new earth, wherein dwells righteousness. The last days. God has spoken unto us in these last days by His Son, who, Hebrews says, He appointed the heir or the inheritor of all things. In this dispensation of time, we owe our salvation to the grace of God in sending Jesus Christ. From the day of Pentecost in Acts 2, the gates, the doors to the kingdom of heaven, the church, has been opened. And as Paul says in Colossians, the first chapter, people have had the opportunity to be translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear Son. We spend, we labor during this time period preaching and teaching and carrying the gospel of Christ to the world, warning them of their need to repent of their sins, turn back to God, and to be faithful to Him and to His Word. What about you today, my friends? Do you believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God in His death, His burial, His resurrection? If you do, you need to take heart the fact that we are not waiting for the last days, but we're in the last days. And in these last days, Hebrews 9.27 says, It is appointed unto man once to die, and then the judgment. If Jesus does not come back in our lifetime, our lives will end. And either way, we're in our last days. You and I, my friends, are in the last days of our lives. We can't go back and relive former days. We need to make the best of the time which we have in service to God. Will you not, believing in Christ, make a decision to repent of your sin, confess your belief, be baptized into Christ, or as a child of God, not walking where you ought to be, through repentance and prayer to Jesus Christ, our advocate, find reconciliation. 
why not make this the day that you and your family make the decision to know more about God's plan for your lives? Why not seek out the Church of Christ in your community and attend one of our worship times or Bible studies? God's salvation is truly worth finding and knowing. May God bless and keep you in His grace as we walk together in His truth. And remember, as always, the Churches of Christ salute you. Thank you again for listening to the lessons today. We would encourage you to visit our website for more learning opportunities. There is much to do and see. www.thechurchesofchrist.life May God bless you. Until we have time together again.